Today I'd just like to have a quick look about how we might convert a simple Java style if else statement into MIPS code. So if you look up here we have a fairly simple if else which says if x mod a equals 0 then return x divided by 8 else return x mod 8. Now just as a reminder what the mod function does is it says for a value of x what is the remainder when it's divided by 8. So for example if x was 16 x mod 8 would be 0 because it goes in twice with no remainder. However, if x was, say, 9, then it would be 1 because there's 1 left over when you divide 9 by 8. So mod just returns the remainder when a number is divided by another one. So what we're saying here is, really, if x is perfectly divisible by 8, return the number of times that x uh, uh, 8 goes into x otherwise return the remainder of that division. So just before we get starting to on writing code, what we've got here is a number, this is just to test, this is our, our x in this instance, and then we have check a because we're going to check the division using the logical operation. Now if you watch the um, logical operations lectures you'll know that there is a way to check the remainder of a number when it's divided by 8 using and, and uh, the way we do that is we use the value of 7 because everything that's higher than that, so you can see here this converts to the first three bits being set and those bits when you sum them up are 1, 2, and 4 which is obviously 7 and past that it's 8, 16, 32 and all of those numbers uh, on to the left of uh, set, uh, 4 are divisible by 8 so for example 8 is of course divisible by 8, 16 is divisible by 8, goes in twice and then you have 32 now if you were to make the number 24 a number between those two, that would be 8 and 16. So you can make every value that's divisible by 8 by using everything leftmost of the third bit. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would do this code. Well, we first of all we need to load these into memory as we always do. Start by doing the simple stuff. So let's load num into t0 and let's load into t1 the value check 8. Okay, so now we want to test to see if x is divisible by 8. So we want to do this x mod 8, and the way we're going to do this is with the and. So we're going to do, and we'll use t3, or t0, and t1. Now if this is 0, that means that it's perfectly divisible by 8, and if it's non-zero, that means there's a remainder, because every other bit in this word is set to 0, so those will all go away and we'll just be left with maybe the first three. So then we want to say branch if equal to zero and we want to test t3 and if it passes we want to go to do div. we'll put that label in before we forget about it and then we'll start to think about what we need to do next. Well we need to return a value so we need to print and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back a line I'm going to load immediately into v0 the value of one because whether I branch or not, I'm going to have to return a number, and I want to do that as an integer, which is, of course, the code of 1. So I'm going to load that in here, so that I don't have to do it in both of my branches. That's going to save me a little bit of work in the long run. Okay, so if we get to this line, it's because we're not equal to 0, and there is, in fact, a remainder, uh, because we've failed this branching condition. So we just fall down, the program counter increments, we just go down to the next line. So in that case... What we want to do is load, actually no we don't want to word, load, we want to move the word into a0, the value in t3, because that's going to be what our remainder is. So we move these values in, and then we can just do a syscall, and that's as sorted, almost. Because if we do it this way, the way that I've structured it, we want to jump past the do div instruction, because we don't want to do the division after we've done the return remainder. So we're going to jump to a label we're going to make called end. That should have a colon. Like that. Uh, so what do we do in here? Well now we actually want to do the division, so I'm going to use the div instruction and I want to divide the number that's in t0 by, oh no, let's uh, store it in a0, sorry. I want it to be the number in t0 that's divided by another number. And I'm going to give this a hard-coded value. Now you might not be aware, but you can do this with div and multiply. Um, when you assemble it will get compiled down into an add immediate with 0 and a value 8 
into a register that register will then have a value of eight and then it'll do the division with it so you can get around it uh, we're still doing register to register work it's just the assemblers hiding that from you by taking a little bit of the work off your shoulders so then if we've done this right we can just do a syscall now what i'd also like to show you while we're here is how uh, mips does division because it's actually a little bit interesting so let's see what happens anyway because if we have this code this five should be a remainder so let's assemble it and hope it runs excellent and we get a value of five out as we should so let's test it again let's give it a case where we should get a value of uh, the number of times it's divided by a number if i put five in here this is five times sixteen so that should equal ten um ten times eight because it's just doubling it uh, plus 8, so we should have 11 times 8, hopefully. So let's assemble it and run it. So yeah, we get 11 out as we expected, so that's good. Now let's have a look at the high low registers. Now, the low register returns the number of times a, a number is divisible by another number. So in this case, when we printed it 11, that's what the low register is actually doing for us. Now the high register will do the same thing or not the same thing, sorry, it will do the same thing as our mod, it returns the remainder. So, high doesn't have a remainder in any of the cases we'll use, because we're skipping the cases when it would have a value by doing that with the logical AND operation instead. But that's what these two registers do, they're linked to division, and that's what they're used for. At least that's all we need to worry about at the moment. Uh, one thing I'd also like to show you while we're here is how to end this program immediately. Uh, we can load into v0, value of 10, and then we can do a syscall, and this terminates our uh, program. So let's run that and see. So the program is finished running, rather than the program is dropped off the bottom. So if the program is dropped off the bottom, it just means we've gone past all of these instructions. So it finished running is uh, actually as X, um, halting the program as it were. That's everything I'd like to go over today. I hope you found this useful. Of course, if you have any questions about anything we've gone over today, please do let me know. Thanks.